Hi everyone, welcome to week two of our personal, uh, personal <laughs> professional development, um, culturally responsive design for English learners, the UDL approach. Um, a couple of things before we jump into our module this week. I've added two resources up here in our untitled categories. Um, the first is a quick video I made about how to personalize YouTube um, to provide opportunities for additional um, additional opportunities for access for students, for all learners. Um, so there's some text here about, you know, what you could do. And then there's a three minute video that shows you some tips and tricks about how do you provide um, turn on captions and subtitles and change languages and those kinds of things um, so that you can better support your students, particularly your EL students. The second piece that I've added, this is really cool. So in 2017, I was able to attend a webinar um, by the two authors of our primary text, Culturally Responsive Design for English Learners, the UDL Approach. And they gave some really great in-depth information about um, why they wrote the book, how they wrote the book, what strategies they were using. Um, so if you are looking for more information or wanting to dig a little bit deeper, this is a fantastic webinar. Um, if you put it up to 1.25 by using the gear and adjusting the speed, it makes the webinar a little bit faster, but still very comprehensible. Um, so just a quick note, it's about an hour. If you do that, it shaves it down to about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, so just something to think about if you're looking for a little bit more uh, in-depth information. So let's jump into our module for this week. Um, this week we are doing universal design and culturally responsive teaching overview. So we're going to think about what are those two ideas and frameworks and how do they work together, but how do they also identify themselves separately? Um, so you're going to start with the start here. Here are our targets for this week. We're going to continue to develop our community of learners. We're going to explain the elements of universal design for learning, and we're going to justify why culturally responsive teaching helps build expert learners, which if you are a, um, if you have knowledge of UDL, expert learners is the ultimate outcome of using UDL principles. Um, is so how do those things work together? Um, then when we jump in, we're going to start thinking, we're going to begin with some identity work. Identity work for ourselves first, um, and then how do we translate that for our students? And how does that build kind of those connections and, and bridge that gap um, by using UDL strategies and CRT strategies paired together with some equity uh, in identity work um, to promote equity? So there's a short video here, and then I just want you to post a one to two sentence reflection um, and initial reaction. That's just to kind of get your brain thinking. Then for our explore, we're going to read chapters one and two in culturally responsive design for English learners. That's pages three through 24. When you're reading, you're going to want to take notes or do some other form of maybe sketch noting or note taking of some sort so that you have things to refer back to. So you could write in the margins of the book. You could use a Google Keep or a Google Doc or Google Slides. Um, I've gotten really big into sketch noting where you kind of draw pictures and images and connections and things between um, to help make connections between what you're reading. So just some thoughts about what do you want? How do you want to take notes? Um, and this is just for yourself. You don't need to turn them in, but it's just for you. The explain portion of our modules um, for any of our modules this summer are going to be our outward thinking modules. So our outward thinking op opportunities. So explains are going to be read by everybody. Um, and we're going to comment on each other's and kind of help deepen each other's discussions and, and thoughts as we go. So when you're thinking about explain after you read, you're going to choose one of these two um, visible thinking routines, square, circle, or triangle, or color symbol image. Um, you can either make a copy of one of these. You can do um, a thought on paper. You could do a flip grid. However you want to respond and share your thinking um, is fine by me. But you want to make sure that you share a link. Make sure the link is accessible, open to everybody. Um, and then you're going to want to share. Once you share, you're going to respond to at least one colleague with an extending thought and a probing question. So to kind of, we're going to try to start working on how do we build a discussion in an online environment. 
for our elaborate every week elaborate is going to be some sort of connection to our to our text and our practice so we're going to start bringing those two things together um this week for our elaborate you're going to create your own identity self-portrait so i've linked my example here um and then given you a template if you would like to use one and then um giving you an opportunity to add that for the week finally you're going to do your evaluate in your evaluate this is going to be your inward reflection so the evaluate is only going to be shared between you and i um, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to have a place to be open and honest about your thoughts and your feelings and your questions without everybody else really having to know those thoughts right now. Um, so in this section, what you're going to do is you're going to think about the reading, think about your current practice, think about what you're hoping your future practice is going to look like and how do all those things start building together? Um, thinking about the activities we did, all of the module as a whole. And I've given you three visible thinking routines um, that you can choose from, or you can do an unstructured response. You again can choose to respond in any way you'd like. I would personally stay away from Flipgrid as a choice because it won't be private. That is um, an open forum. So if you still want to record a video or an audio, Screencastify or 123apps.com might be good places for you to, to do that. Um, and then your success criteria for evaluating responses is here. So make reference to at least one source found in the module, connects the content of the module to current and future practice, and you conclude with a thought provoking question or next step to consider. Again, be vulnerable, be open, be honest, share what you're thinking. Um, this is an opportunity for you and I to have a conversation without having a conversation. Um, so be able, I want you to feel comfortable enough to share, know that this is a judgment free zone, know that I'm not, um, what you write is what you write and that's how you're feeling and there there's not going to be any judgment or um anything towards you or your practice um i want to help you figure out how to use these strategies in a way that works for you so um please feel free to write anything you'd like in those evaluates knowing that they're just going to be between you and i after that you're done the module for the week um make sure that you turn in everything that needs to be turned in and the due date for this is um, the this coming Sunday. But remember, as long as everything is in by the final due date, um, you don't have to worry about making sure that the, the deadlines are followed um, exactly. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'm looking forward to reading and learning with all of you. Bye.